Bow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today we gotta answer a question: How did Murder beat somebody who went to school in Canada all the way through high school? become a hit making producer making songs like fight night and pipe it up for the Migos by 23 years old. I'm not sure which age Canadians graduate from high school but I'm assuming this happened in about five years. Now I happened to be at an event about a year ago where Murder Beats told this story and it was no surprise that it was the internet. He used social media to build a platform of his own and he used social media to network. Now I actually detailed this specific strategy along with Murder Beats story and a lot of other stories in my master music networking guide but I said hey what the heck I'll go ahead and do a video on it and share it here as well but back to Murder Beats. Now when it comes to the Migos it started when Murder Beats reached out to Skipper the Flipper, a pretty well known name in Atlanta. Now Murder Beats knew that Skipper the Flipper was pretty close to the Migos but he didn't know that he was their engineer. Skipper the Flipper informed him that yo yeah, well, I'm their engineer and know what I'll play them some beats next time they're in the studio. The Migos end up liking some of the beats and end up making records to them. Now at this time the Migos was nowhere near the level of the Migos that they are today. They had blown up and they were buzzing in Atlanta and certain areas of hip hop but they were levels below where they are now. As a matter of fact if I remember correctly this is in 2013 before the YRN mixtape was even released. But they liked the beats so much and the chemistry was going well next thing you know Murder Beats moved to Atlanta and was working with them in that camp heavily. This story is only a small example of a strategy that Murder Beats successfully used again and again. Atlanta was like the third city that he really targeted and the Migos was the last situation that you really hear about because it worked so well. Obviously the Migos really have blown up but he had already done this exact same strategy in Chicago and San Francisco Bay Area. Now I can't remember any of the artists names because I didn't even know him when he mentioned them but here are five basic steps that I summarized that he used. Number one, he built a platform and catalog of his own in the sense of his beats on the internet. Number two, he would identify a city to target. Once again, we talked about Chicago, San Francisco, and Atlanta. Number three, find artists in the area who have buzz but have not blown up yet. One reason that this is so important because that means they're bubbling. You see that they have promise. However, they aren't untouchable at the time. It's easier to get in contact with them. So number four, he would get in contact with somebody that's close to the artist, if not the artist themselves, and then use that so then hopefully they would like his beats. Once they record the beats, that will also lead into other people in the area recording on his beats because that's how it often works. Once somebody says, yo, I like that man's song, who produced his song? they find that producer. Because number five is technically to get that trusted person that you might find in those circles to pitch your beats to those artists because that's going to increase the likelihood that they actually listen to the beats in the first place. Once again, if you aren't able to get in contact with the artists themselves, especially. I know it sounds like a very simple formula, but you have to remember it takes hours and hours to really get in contact with people. A lot of times you might have to tweet them a billion times, follow on social media. All this stuff is work a lot of work but it does show that this strategy does work because Metro Boomin basically did the same thing. He wasn't in Canada, he was in St. Louis. Y'all seen the video I've done on him but he used a similar strategy to get to Atlanta. If you haven't seen that video I'll put the link in the description below and somewhere else in this video and also in the description below as I mentioned earlier in the video it's a link to my master music networking guide if you're interested in some detailed ways on how to get in contact with people and actually have real conversations that convert to whatever needs you may have. Many people have contacted me and said they've used it to get in contact with producers, artists, they've gotten sponsorships using it. There's so many different ways, whatever you need, most likely it can help you out. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.